Hey friends, welcome to the last session of .vvm virtual conference. I hope that you enjoyed sessions on uh, today and yesterday. And uh, so let's uh, let's see what's uh, planned for the next version of .vvm. And uh, after that, of course, if you have any questions, just let us know in the chat uh, here in the in the live stream or on our Gitter chat, uh, you will find the links on our website and on and on uh, GitHub uh, because uh, we are very interested in your feedback, what you think about .vvm, what features you would, would appreciate in the framework or if you have any suggestions or questions, we will be very happy to help and uh, talk with you because we are very interested in knowing how the users are actually using .vvm and what you are building. Okay, so let's see what uh, plans we have for the next major release, the .vvm 4.0. Um, we always try to have some kind of main theme for each uh, major version. So for the version 4, the topic is uh, make it easier to create custom controls. Because .vvm supported uh, creating your own controls from the first versions, but uh, in the version 2 or 3 we didn't change much about this process and looking back uh, it's not uh, very straightforward there is a quite steep learning curve so uh, if you want to build your own controls in .vvm it's possible but uh, the framework doesn't help you much uh, with with this and you need to know a lot about how .vvm works uh, internally. So that's why we want to uh, change this because we feel that this is starting to be a limitation for uh, many users of .vvm and uh, if we can make it uh, more straightforward, more intuitive, more easy, then I think it would be uh, very useful not only to people who are uh, just writing these controls but also to other team members who are just using the controls because they will probably have more controls to use and it should improve the development speed. So uh, what's the current situation in the framework? We have two types of controls. First is markup controls, which is uh, the file with an extension dot control. And basically it's a piece of uh, dot HTML markup. You can define your own properties in uh, the markup and then you can use this markup control on any place in your application. This is great for application specific markup controls because uh, typically you can reuse these markup controls in one project, in one app, but uh, I cannot imagine, or it's hard to imagine a such universal markup control that would be uh, where it would be possible to use it in any app you might know, you might have, because uh, typically these controls are using uh, CSS uh, styles, which are also part of the concrete application. So this is not not great for the very universal controls, which you can use anywhere, but it's great if you need to reuse parts of markup in one, one application. Uh, the next uh, type of controls is the code only controls. And uh, basically it's just a C-sharp class, which uh, inherits from .vvm control. And it uh, can define properties, it can hook up to the control lifecycle so you can do things in init load pre-render methods and it can also override its own rendering so you can render something completely different than the control tree which is inside uh, of your controls. This is uh, very powerful, however it's also very low level because uh, you can do anything but if you want to look if you want to build some more complex control you need to know a lot of things and if you go to .vvm framework github repository and look on some controls how they are written uh, you will see that even the most basic controls like text box are pretty complicated actually yeah and uh, the truth is that uh, this is uh, not a problem for framework authors like us because we know how this works and what should the control does. But for uh, people who don't have any knowledge about how the .vvm works internally, this is very difficult. Yeah? And also what uh, bothers me too is uh, how the .vvm properties are declared. They are not just regular properties with get set and auto-generated bodies, but you need to use the code snippet um, .prop tab tab and it will 
generate this crazy bunch of code. It's similar like dependency properties in WPF. The reason for this is that you need to, the, the property need to support the raw value and also the data binding expression. So it it's not that easy, just a string property because it wouldn't be possible to hide a binding expression inside it. But uh, we still are thinking about ways how to make the declaration of these properties easier or maybe auto generated from something else. So you don't need to type so much code and maintain the costs. So if you look at some more complex controls, you have hundreds of lines of these .vvm properties. So we have some ideas how to make markup controls more easier, more convenient. Uh, there are a couple of things we can do uh, to make it easier so you don't need to create the code behind class uh, together with the markup control because if you were just uh, reusing piece of markup you can just have the dot control file and you don't need to have the c sharp code behind class attached to this file that the, the base type directive it is yeah but uh, if you want for example to use a css class on this proper on this entire markup control, then you need to use the code behind class and add attributes or CSS classes. Uh, so whenever you use the markup control, it will also have the correct uh, CSS class. And uh, we were thinking about uh, reusing the wrapper tag directive, which is present. Yeah, so you can say, okay, this my control, the wrapper tag for this my control is div. But uh, uh, we are thinking about adding uh, a support for this. You can say, okay, it will be a diff, but set the role attribute to panel. And also this dot means it's a CSS class. It's the CSS selector syntax. So also it means that, okay, and add CSS class styled panel to this control. So you won't need to create the C-sharp code behind class because wherever you use this markup control, it will be a diff with this attribute and with this CSS class. So this is an idea we had. We had an issue on GitHub and uh, probably we will implement it because it looks quite nice to, uh, to us. Yeah, but it's still, it's still in uh, consideration. Then uh, we were thinking about uh, adding an option to declare .vvm properties as uh, directives in the markup file. So also if you want to just create a markup control with few properties, you need to set from outside. Uh, then you also, right now, you need to create the C-sharp code behind file and declare these .vvm properties. And for example, we could uh, create a property directive, which would say, okay, we will have a title property. It can be a value or a binding of string. Yeah, this is a new type we are already supporting in uh, uh, the, one of the pull requests and we can reuse it here because if it's just string it means that it doesn't support uh, data binding if it's this value or binding string it means it supports either string value or a data binding and also we have a, a value binding of string which means that okay it can be a binding but you cannot write just title equals something yeah it has to be a binding yeah, so based on this type, we would be able to distinguish if it's if a binding is supported or not. And then uh, you can uh, specify a default value. Maybe there will be some option to also specify other things like if this property is required, because it's also quite important for us. And uh, other things like maybe uh, because if it's uh, the item, te item plate, it means that uh, we will have to uh, set also some markup options to that uh, .vvm parser should look for this property, not as an attribute, but in the body of uh, this control. So it's not, uh, it's still in our head. We are still thinking about how to approach this the best, but uh, we want to just remove a lot of uh, places where you need to create a code behind class. Also, if you want to create a markup control, but host a template inside, uh, then also it's not very easy to do. You have to create some um, element with an ID and then in the code behind file, you need to look for this element and 
instantiate the template inside and we want to make it easier so we were thinking about some kind of template host control where you could just bind the template and the template could be introduced by this uh, add property so you would be able to create a markup control with templates uh, without the code behind class and uh, it should be it should be uh, pretty easy to do however there are also some internal issues we have right now with passing templates inside markup controls because uh, it's uh, basically there is a lot of things that VVM needs to do internally to uh, make sure the template will work in a different scope in a different markup file yeah. because you can still uh, if you are using the template in the page you can use types that are related to import directives in the page, not related to the markup uh, to the in import directives in the markup control file. Yeah, so it's it's complicated and it gets even more complicated when you are using recursion. Yeah, so if you are recursively using markup control inside its own instance, if you would be rendering some tree structures or something like that, you will meet this situation and it gets more and more complicated. So we are uh, currently considering how to implement this because it's not, not very easy. And uh, it's complicated because we want the templates to be type safe and yeah? the template needs to know in which data context it will be used. Yeah? So you would have IntelliSense and we would have uh, strong typing and syntax checking and all those nice things. Yeah? But these are, these are just things we are thinking about in uh, terms of markup controls. Uh, for code only controls, uh, we have uh, found that a lot of users are writing their own code only controls. And the most frequent scenario is that you just want to compose a control from existing ones. So it's not creating your own component from scratch. Not, not many people are writing actually their own grid view. They are pretty fine with the one which is in a uh, .vvm framework and uh, they can, you can just extend it. But uh, typically you want to create some control which composes several controls together. Uh, and but it needs to be more universal so it cannot be done in a markup control because the structure of the control can depend on values of some parameters yeah and that's uh, when uh, we introduced that's why we have introduced the concept of composite control which is uh, defined as uh, just a c sharp class and the only requirement you have is to provide a static uh, com a static method called get contents and you don't need to declare the .vvm properties like uh, you would normally do. You can do it in the composite control, but you don't have to, because if you pass any parameters to the get contents method, it will create these uh, .vvm properties for you. Uh, so you will be able to just uh, specify five attributes and these will be converted to .vvm properties uh, so you can just use them and we have that that's where we are also using the new type value or binding so if the value is bindable but it can be also provided at a compile time uh, you can use this uh, this new type you can specify default values and uh, other things and it should it should just work and we are also working about on a new fluent api which will help you to just build the uh, control tree so for example uh, I can uh, create a new return, a new HTML generic control fluent progress and set the value attribute to the value or binding. Yeah? And uh, this extension method will do the rest. If the value is hard coded, then it will just set the value. If it's the binding, it will translate it to the blah, blah, blah expression and uh, use it, uh, use it here. So we are just now, we are just fine tuning these extension methods uh, to make sure that all scenarios you would probably need will be covered by these methods and it would help us to um, to implement this functionality. So you are just on just you just need to provide a static method that returns the tree of the controls you want to be you want uh, to be rendered and that's it. And of course because uh, this is uh, 
just an expression you can use ifs you can use for loops you can use link you can use anything so you can basically generate the control tree this makes it very powerful it's more powerful than markup controls where the markup is basically static you cannot change the structure you can only substitute some values yeah? here you can also manipulate with the structure so you can generate any any structure of uh, components and this is this is really powerful and with this syntax it will uh, be much easier to define uh, .vvm properties. This is already implemented in a pull request, which is called easier way to write controls. If you look at our GitHub repo, you can see it there. You can even uh, try it if you um, if you use uh, the .vvm repo as a submodule. And uh, it's uh, we are just uh, finishing. Uh, and reviewing uh, if everything is um, is nice to and easy to use and uh, once we are finished we will merge it and we will of course uh, publish a preview because uh, we want to get feedback on this feature as soon as possible so basically you need to in inherit from a composite control which is a new type and implement a static method called get contents and it will emit dot vm properties from the attribute from uh, the arguments of this method and uh, you can also go to this link to a sample repo where i have some experiments with this uh, functionality it's also using fluent ui because this method is great for building wrappers over either dot vm controls or html elements yeah even this sample is just a wrapper over fluent progress yeah so i'm creating a static statically typed dot vvm component which will know about the value property it will know the type of the attribute it will know if it supports a binding or not and it just renders some html and then the fluent ui scripts will make it look like a fluent ui progress bar so this is very very easy and simple way to write wrappers over uh, existing controls so let's look uh, at our demo. This project I will be showing, it's not publicly available yet, but we are working on it and uh, we are still deciding if it's a good idea or not. And also we are waiting until the Fluent UI team adds the missing components. And uh, we are not sure if we will publish this as open source or as a paid product. We are still uh, thinking about it because uh, it would be similar to bootstrap 4.vvm it would simplify the usage of fluent ui but it is just wrappers 4.vvm it doesn't add value to the fluent ui itself same as uh, bootstrap 4.vvm it's just syntax sugar 4.vvm but still un underneath there is still just the open source bootstrap yeah so the the principles behind this fluent ui library will be uh, very similar Okay, so let's uh, let's uh, sh let's look at the demo. You have seen the syntax that will be probably available. So that's what we are trying to achieve because .vvm can provide IntelliSense for these controls. It can provide IntelliSense here for data bindings. It can tell you that you need to only use these elements inside. So this strongly typed approach is very beneficial because it helps you to catch a lot of errors before you even try to run the app. And uh, if you look how these uh, wrappers are actually built, so I can open the tabs class and uh, it's uh, kind of simple. It's just one screen to build a wrapper like this. So I have the tabs control, uh, which uh, derives from Fluent UI Composite Control. This is just my base class. The only thing it adds is that it's the composite control, but it adds the Fluent UI script it makes sure that this script will be uh, included in the page otherwise the controller wouldn't work because it would be missing the script so that's the only reason why we have the fluent ui composite control and here you can see the control needs a list of tab elements and if it's a list of some .vvm controls the .vvm parser know that this will be inside the element and also we have this attribute telling it that if it finds any content inside the fluent tabs control it will be treated as the items property yeah so all elements you will put uh, inside will go to the items property and if it's not compatible with this type you will get a compile time error yeah 
So it's it's great. It will provide the validation. Uh, there is a active indicator property with the default value true. We probably will change this syntax so you will be, you will be able to use just bool active indicator equals true. Right now it's not implemented, but we think we will change this. Maybe we will support both syntax, but of course this one is much more practical. Uh, the same is with uh, active ID, but the active ID can be a binding, so there is value or binding. Yeah, because I want to bind to this, I want to be able to uh, detect on which tab the user actually is, in my view model. And uh, orientation equals horizontal, because the tabs can also be vertical, so there are, there are actually two options. And this is also quite uh, nice, because uh, in dotnet we are using these uh, values but i have created an attribute of html name where in html the value can look differently yeah, and uh, this also auto generates some code so in the markup you will use the enum name from c sharp but it will be converted to this uh, html name that will be used on the client side yeah and uh, we need to do two things. We need to prepare the tab headers. So I will take the items collection and I will create an HTML generic control fluent tab and set the inner text to uh, this, uh, this thing. I'm not sure why we are using this syntax. Yeah, we can, we can do it. Uh, we can do it like this. I'm not sure. Maybe it's some refactoring magic but I'm using the fluent tab and with property inner text and uh, get value, uh, get value raw. Yeah. So I'm just taking the, uh, no matter if it's a uh, value or binding, I'm just taking the value and setting it to the inner text. And then I'm returning a fluent tabs element and uh, with uh, this attribute, with this active ID uh, bind attribute, and the orientation and uh, this uh, I'm using as a children and also this because the fluent tabs element is designed like that that you inside you put either or both tab headers and the tab contents inside the fluent tabs so that's why I'm using the tab headers and items as children yeah and this is fine because it will render exactly what I what I need and uh, I can go to the tab element, which is inside. And also it's a fluent UI composite control. I have a header text, which is defined using this way uh, because I need to specify some things that are not available uh, using the other way, but uh, we will probably change this. So also this property could be, uh, could be uh, specified like that. But uh, right now I, I need to read its value uh, from here uh, and to set it to the header text. So that's why I need to have it as a proper, uh, as a proper dot uh, .vvm property. Otherwise I wouldn't be able to use this name. Yeah. So that's, that's the reason why I'm doing this right now, but still the tab itself is uh, pretty easy because it has some ID, it has some text, it can be bindable or it has a list of controls which can be inside. So either you are using the text property or you are using the content. And uh, I'm returning a new Fluent tab panel with this ID and with this text or content. This is my, this is my helper method, which will uh, detect if the user has specified the text property or if the user has specified content. You cannot specify both because uh, the VVM wouldn't know which one you actually want to use, there will be a conflict. So you can use one or the another, the other. Yeah. So this, this, or if, uh, if none, none of them is set, I will just do nothing. It will be just an empty tab. Yeah. So this is uh, how the wrappers are actually written. Most of them are very simple. They get just about 30, 40 lines of code. So it's very convenient. And I think also if you look at the class, it's uh, pretty intuitive you know, if you want to see what it actually does. So we are still working on 
some ways to clean up the syntax. I don't like these default uh, value attributes much. So this is what we will be fine tuning. So it's even easier, but I still think that uh, this is a great improvement and uh, hopefully it will be useful even if you want to create components from other 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 ones. Uh, what's uh, quite uh, interesting is the select because you can do quite complex things with this mechanism. For example, the select, which is the drop down list. So it needs a data source, which is uh, uh, and it must be a binding. So I'm requiring it has to be I value binding of any object. So this is a data source and uh, you have selected value, which all also must be a binding and some things about how it will look like. This is pretty simple. And then you need to specify which property of these objects will be treated as a text and which will be treated as a value. So this is the item text binding, item value binding. If you know the default uh, combo box control in uh, .vvm framework, we are using the exactly same concept. You give a give it a collection of objects and then you say, okay, display this property, which is item text binding and display this property, which is value binding. But you need to change the binding context for these two bindings to a member of this collection. So that's why we have this control property binding data context change and con collection element data context change. So it will look to the data source property and infer its type. And then it's a collection. So we need to look inside the collection and what's the type of the individual items. And this is the data context for this data binding. So <clears throat> you can use these attributes. If you have uh, been writing your own controls with data source, you probably have seen these attributes and you can use the same attributes, same approach here. So it's, it's pretty powerful. It can do a lot of things. And uh, because fluent select, as I shown in the first session today, it's just a repeater, which renders the fluent select tag and inside it's rendering fluent option elements for each item in the collection. That's why I can implement it using a repeater. So I'm creating a repeater, setting wrapper tag name to fluent select and creating an item template, which is fluent option. And I'm setting the value and the text of these options. And that's it. The rest is just a normal ceremony with setting some uh, field attribute to true or false, setting position to some enum and uh, selected value is a property and I need to use this fast dot bind binding because it's two ways. So that's why I'm using this with property and fast bind dash value. This is just a replacement. This is a equivalent of uh, fast dot bind dash value. So that's it. That's how you can write a select a wrapper over fluent UI select control. It's I really like this, this approach. So that was a easier way to write controls. We have a pull request for this. Most of this functionality is already implemented. So if you want to try it, you can clone .vvm repo as a sub module and you can reference the uh, .vvm framework uh, ASP.NET Core projects and try it. Um, that reminds me that I wanted to record a video about uh, using .vvm as a submodule because it can be useful to many people. So uh, watch us on, uh, on Twitter and you will see a tweet uh, with the link to this video after I, uh, after I record it. Uh, one of the other features we wanted to introduce is more clever grid view data sets. Uh, because right now we have the grid view data set object which supports paging and sorting. Uh, but it's not uh, very extensible. If you have different strategy for paging and sorting, uh, it's, uh, you cannot use this object. You have to create your own basically from scratch. Yeah? Because the paging is uh, using page index and page size, which is great for SQL relational databases. But if you are using other uh, database engines, for example, Cosmos DB or any other document databases, uh, some of them don't have a concept of page index. Instead, they are using things like a continuation token. So you get a first page of records and then you get some magic strings, which is called continuation token. And if you provide this token, you will get the next page of records. 
and it can contain the token for the previous page and for the next page. So if you want to create a token based paging, this data set uh, cannot, uh, cannot help you very much. Also, it's same same things if, 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 if with the sorting because 99% of users just need to sort by one column. That's why we are just have the sort expression and sort descending property. But if you want to allow the users to sort by multiple columns, also it's not possible right now. And for if if you want a filtering support, you can use the business pack data set, which derives from the grid view data set. But if you also uh, derived from the grid view data set in the framework, you cannot derive from two classes in, in C sharp. So it's very difficult to combine the features together. So what we are also the data set relies on commands. So if you are using command binding, it's perfect, it will work. But if you want to load it using static command, it is possible, but it's not very easy and straightforward to do. And uh, also the grid view and data pager controls, they generate buttons for sorting and paging. And these buttons also have command bindings baked inside. So if you want to create paging that will work with static commands, you basically need to write your own data pager. Yeah. So this is uh, pretty inconvenient and we want to uh, extend this to uh, so the static commands can be used in, with the same comfort as commands. So we have a few suggestions. It's also an issue on GitHub. So if you want to give us feedback on it, uh, please let us know. We will be very happy because we are still considering many things and it uh, always an external opinion will really help us in the decision process. So first we were thinking about a concept of some kind of data set loader because uh, the data set sh is a presentation layer, con layer concern. It should define the data you want to display and how and uh, it's, it's just a declaration that I am displaying this data with this settings of sorting, this settings of, of paging and this filter. So basically this, that's something like a the request is something like a query definition or something like that. And it shouldn't contain logic on how to load this information. This should be somewhere else. So the data set should tell the user what you want to display and it should be able to control what you want to be displayed. And data set loader should tell how to get this data based on the definition in the grid view data set. And here you would be able to tell, okay, I want to use commands. So I will post the view model on the server and call load from queryable or something like that. Or I want to bind it from the REST API. I want to use static command. I want to get the data from uh, JS module. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, very, uh, yeah, you can, you can, you can choose what's the way of, uh, of loading these data sets. So if you want to, if uh, this is this is a control we would like to provide, so it would be extensible and you could uh, explicitly define how you want to get the data. The other problem is that, as I said, grid view and data pager are generating their own controls with command bindings baked in. So if you use data pager, it will render the buttons for numbers for all pages but these buttons have the command binding inside. If you want to customize how these buttons look like and how the data bindings in these buttons uh, work, you it's, you'd need to write your own control. So we are thinking about some kind of uh, template provider mechanism that uh, you could on the application or on the page level, you could say, okay, in data pager, I want the buttons to look like this and have a data binding that would look like this. So if we want to load by static command, you would be able to do that. And the last thing is that uh, we want to make the grid view data set to be generic. So it will have, there will be a class generic grid view data set, which will have a lot of generic parameters. And you will be able to specify your custom sorting options, custom paging option, as the custom filtering options. So if you want to create a token based paging or multi criteria sorting, you would be able to provide the data set with a concrete type, which represents all settings for sorting, all settings for paging, and you would be able to build your own 
grid view data set. So that's what, uh, what's uh, on our plan. And the last area we want to improve, and we have already started working on this, is the validation because also it works well for commands, but it doesn't work for static commands really, really nice. It's not difficult to, uh, it's not very difficult to uh, make it work for static commands if you know how the VVM works, because you can just uh, use some kind of action filter, which would uh, get the model state random view model validation or not the view model the arguments validation and return the validation errors to the client but still we want to make it work by default so we are thinking about uh, uh, you can that you could apply uh, validation attributes on arguments of methods called from static command so you would send the first name and last name to some method and in the declaration of the method you can say okay this is required this is required this has to be a number and things like that and also, if uh, the method, the valid if the validation doesn't pass, uh, the model state would be returned to the ser to the client, and the client would also highlight the fields uh, which contain these uh, invalid uh, invalid properties. Also, if you generate your own validation paths, if you are um, implementing your iValidity table object and your your own validation mechanisms, sometimes you need to compose the paths in the view model eh? like the in the event settings dot begin date is uh, yeah, this property is not correct and you need to provide dot vvm where to find this property in the view model and uh, currently you had to compose knockout js compatible expression so there was a lot of uh, the parentheses and uh, it was difficult when you are using arrays we want to uh, clean this up so there will be a better API for specifying these validations errors. And also, we are thinking about, uh, and this is also just an idea, uh, we think about a feature called zero.vvm startup, because right now, if you are writing a larger application, the .vvm startup file is quite long because you need to register all the routes, all the controls, all the resources, and things like that. And we were thinking about uh, introducing some convention-based uh, registrations. So if you follow some kind of uh, project structure in the file system, yeah, so you would create a folder per page and view models and views will be in the same folder. And you can also add resources like JavaScripts and CSS styles, and these will be included automatically to the page. Then if you follow these conventions, you, the .vvm startup could be almost empty because .vvm would just scan the file system and auto discover all pages, all controls, all scripts, all resources and things like that. Yeah, so this is also one of the ideas we are looking uh, at because currently the .vvm startup is quite long and it's not very convenient to look for some kind of route registration if there is a lot of a lot of routes in the application. So that's the plan for .vvm 4.0. Some things will be there for sure, like the easier way to write controls because it's almost ready. Some things we hope that we will make into this release, like the validation and uh, of course uh, the grid view data set improvements would be nice, but uh, we don't want to delay uh, the release of .vvm 4.0 too, for too long so if uh, we see that some of these areas is uh, larger than we thought then we will release .vvm 4.0 without this feature and uh, postpone this particular feature to .vvm 5. We want to make the major releases more frequent so you can get more uh, new features and you can get them more quickly. So this is the last slide of um, the entire conference. If you want to help us, if you like .vvm, if you like to join um, the team or at least provide us some feedback, we would be very happy. Post an issue on GitHub or if you are uh, brave enough, you can just clone the code base and you can send us pull requests with some improvements. Even if you find some tiny little issues in the docs, please send us pull request. There is the edit button. So if you find a typo or any problem in the documentation, just click on the edit, uh, edit button and uh, send us pull request. It's uh, very easy and it will help us because we want the documentation to be as 
good as possible. And of course, if you can spread the word about .vvm, if you like it, we would be very happy because the growing community is uh, best for all uh, open source uh, open source project. We will be happy to talk. If you want to talk with us, you can use this chat or you can uh, talk to us on Gitter. And of course, follow us on our social media, especially Twitter and YouTube, because on YouTube we are publishing a lot of videos. And on Twitter, we are posting information about new releases and all the events we are doing. And uh, we have a monthly meetup. So if you are also interested in getting know about the .vvm community and uh, hearing regular information about what we are planning, what we are working on, join also our meetups. It's a great source of uh, information. And of course, you can ask any questions and we will be happy to happy to talk with you. So thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoyed the entire conference. So have a nice rest of the day. Bye.